Hello, this is Resretro Through Time, and today I have a friend. Introduce yourself. Hello, my name is Samuel Van Hoogmode. I am author of the Lamplight Chronicles, uh, two books in the series, Lamplight, City of Poisoned Hearts, and Lamplight, The Patron Saint. Um, pretty much vampire enthusiast and also major history buff as well. Exactly. Yeah, we we are gonna actually talk a little bit about his book today. Um, when did it? When did you release the first book? So the first book was, I want to say October thirty first, twenty twenty. Twenty twenty. Yeah. So during COVID. Yeah, during COVID. I needed a win that year, man. I needed a win. <laughs> how did how did how did you get started writing? So I've always I've always liked writing. I it's like my coping mechanism for uh, a lot. I, uh, so I journal a lot and everything and it's just, I just, it just relaxes me and I really enjoy doing it. And then I started doing like little, just fiction, like first little poems and then little, little short stories, things like that. And eventually one short story, which is the prelude in the first book, um, just took on a, a life of its own and became the first book. Okay. Um, what, so walk me a little bit of how you... Like, how long did it take you to write the whole thing? Mm, start to finish, two years. Two years? So, yeah. started in 2018, or? Let's see, do the math right. Uh, yeah, right around right around then, because I wrote the short story. I initially wrote the short story because I was, re at the time, I was reading Dracul, which is the prequel, kind of prequel, sequel to Dracula, was written by Bram Stoker's great-grandnephew. So I was reading that, and I remember I was just, I was in my dorm room, I was in college at the time, I was just reading the book, and I was listening to to uh, Hellfire um, from Hunchback of Notre Dame, and it was a female cover, and I look, and it's like a, on the YouTube, it was, it's this video, and I see this lady, she's, you know, she's very dramatic with, like, she has, like, this white, kind of silverish hair, and uh, she did her, like, wonderful eye makeup and everything, and I, I don't know, something, I'm reading this, I'm looking at that, looking back, looking like that, and something clicked, and I'm just like, I think I'll write a little sh sh short story, and I put it together. Nice. And then, you know, I, I let it sit on my computer for months, and I was going through classes and everything, and then I finished, I ended up finishing Dracula, I ended up finishing reading the book, and I go, freaking love this, this is awesome, I'm gonna read, definitely gonna read Dracula, the original novel. And then as I'm reading that, I start thinking about an ex-girlfriend and everything and I start thinking about how kind of like vampirism is like a good metaphor for heartbreak and what I mean by that is everyone here probably has has had a heartbreak at some time I had my heart broken a couple of times and I've noticed that there's two responses to it there's response a where you know you get your heart broken and you're just like you know what I'm done I'm hurting, so I'm going to go out and hurt other people, right? Yeah. I'm going to go out and I'm going to, like, I'm going to do it. You know, I'm going to break some hearts now. And then there's the other response where it's just like, man, this hurts, but I'm going to use this and be better, right? It's like, okay, I'm going to take what I learned and be better. And I feel that's, like, the same thing with vampirism because va how you become a vampire. Vampire by you, you know, something, you know, you it changes you, and that's the whole story theme of the book it's like love and loss mm -hmm. do you become a monster that just prowls around causing nothing but misery and death and destruction and and just harming people or do you become something better you know yeah it's like you know you you got bit you're kind of but you can be better you can it's not it's not the end for you you can go out and be better and do something better so that's the whole premise yeah. behind it so in your story um is the main character a vampire or so there's two there's two okay. characters because i like i'm a big nerd <laughs> i'm a really big nerd um and i love things like resident evil so there's a lot of like a lot of horror influences that got thrown into it as well um so i was playing resident evil 2 at one point and or it or either i was playing it or the trailer came out something came out where it's like uh I learned that there's two, you know, you got Claire Redfield and Leon S. Kennedy, and there's you, there's two protagonists. And I go, that's kind of cool. I like that. And then I thought of this person I knew. Uh, she was a professor and a mentor, 
in my uh, school. In my uh, school, I went to I went to Fresno State, and I remember she was awesome, and she just had this. She was very beautiful too. She was very beautiful, very smart, and I just you know I was just like you know what I'm gonna use her kind of as the basis for Dana Winters, which is yeah. this homicide detective that. And she's going to be the, the vehicle for the audience because this could be a whole world and the audience naturally is not good. The readers are not going to know offhand. So she's going to be their vessel their, the, and kind of have her own story as well. Then you have the secondary protagonist, um, Samuel Vang, which, the... which I originally was going to be Samuel Fang. But I go, Fang is too on the nose. It's it's too <laughs> yeah, on the you're nose. You're trying to be a little So I, I, changed, I changed the F to a V and... Uh, the reason why I use I used my first name because I uh, at the time I was just freestyling it like I did not have any notes written down I was just totally just freestyling and I go okay I need to remember the name okay I'll use my first name because that'd be the easiest thing to remember it has a nice ring to it it kind of sounds kind of sounds like something out of a gothic novel and I'm just like okay we'll go from here and so it's the the story is from their both pers- two perspectives so, so it switches yeah so Dana you follow her. And she catches a case where this woman is completely drained of blood, you know, kind of telltale vampire-esque things, and she doesn't know what's going on. And you uh, then you go, she meets this character who's posing as an FBI agent, Samuel Vang. And by the, at this point, the readers know that Vang, there's more to him than meets the eye. Like, he knows a thing or two more about what's going on and Dana's immediately suspicious of him and all the while this is going on is they're investigating you know these these killings right because more bodies are popping up drain the blood and also being posed in grotesque ways right almost like just morbid art pieces it's almost, almost like a serial killer right? yeah exactly like and so it's like they're call- the newspapers are now calling them you know everyone's calling him the love sick killer now because he's leaving poems too and so Dana, her objective, it, but she's going, the thing is, is pain. That's, we go back to this theme. All the characters, whether they be good, wicked, or um, neutral, they've experienced some form of loss. So Dana, you learned that she had this boyfriend who was also a police officer. He was on the SWAT team. They went out to go get a suspect. He ends up getting killed. Okay. And so she's dealing with that loss. And her, her family, her sister, is saying, like, you need to get out there. Um, and that's one reason why it takes place, the, the beginning of the novel takes place on Christmas. Family. When we first meet Dana, she's working the candle at both ends at the office. Yeah. And she's, you know, and they're, you know, her boss is like, go home. Seriously, go home. It's Christmas Eve. You need, you, you go home. You, you, you know, that's, you be with your family. Vang is out, uh, out and about trying to track down, a, you know, there's, trying to track down another vampire and he lost his 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 his, uh wife right and he lost his wife and there's another confidant named echo she he's she's his friend and and also kind of co-worker and she's also like kind of like a vampire hunter as well she's working with this organization as well and she loves Ving. she deeply loves him and it She's a vampire herself, so she's watched, you know, Vang all these all this time, and she's fallen madly in love with him, but she's not telling him. But you can see in her actions, and there's actually a scene where Vang he's going through a hard time because he's faced with these demons. Now I'm all, I won't go into spoilers too much, okay. um, because that's part of the part of the twist. Um, so I'm being very ambiguous, but he faces these demons, right? He gets in this fight. And not only is he physically torn apart, emotionally and psychologically he's broken too, and he's drinking the coke, and she rips Echo rips the bottle out of his hands, throws it against the wall, and tells her straight up like you're not talking to a damn bottle, you're gonna be talking, to, you're gonna talk to me about this. Yeah. And it's it's all about that. It's like these. So the two heroes. There's also two villains, right? There's this vampiric crime boss right that's starting this like vampire criminal mafia and then the serial killer as well both of them are hurting but instead of doing good like dana and vang they are the mere the twisted mere funhouse image of of vang and and dana 
because now they're like, oh, we're hurting, so we're going to do what we want, and hurt, we're going to hurt other people. And that's the whole, where the conflict happens. That is so cool, man. Yeah, and it's like, it's like you got a little bit of gothic horror and a little bit of neo-noir crime drama. Uh, yeah, I can tell. You used a lot of, like, because I remember when we were working together, mm -hmm. you liked stuff like this, like noir and... Yeah, uh, Spider-Man Noir will always be my favorite Spider-Man. Yeah, you love you love Noir, you love uh, Vampire. We always talked about like vampires or like different like nerdy stuff. Yeah, during like working at Lowe's, and uh, man, so like yeah, you drew a lot of inspiration not only from your life, but also from your yeah. interests. And I think too, like my biggest my biggest like heroes for like in regards to writing were like Stan Lee, mm -hmm. which is weird because. In a weird way, it does kind of read like a comic book in a in a lot. Cause, you know, like I'm a big comic book fan. I was I grew up reading them. And Punisher was your favorite, right? Was it Punisher? It was Punisher at first, and then Batman because Batman is your because favorite. Batman. It's for whatever reason. I I don't know what it is with me, but like pain is a big. I don't know. It's like it's a big thing for me because it's like, and overcoming it because in my life, you know. I, I do, I, you know, I have a career on the, you know, this, the writing of this I do on the side, but like I have, like, you know about my main job and it took me two years to get it and it's, it's a painful journey. Like, and no matter where you go, there's going to be pain on any journey and, you know, life, life will beat you down if you let it. It's like, it will like come out of nowhere and this, and, and the thing is it doesn't fight fair. It sucker punches you. It's, it's like, you'll be just, you know, minding your business, and then all of a sudden, it's like, someone comes behind you with a baseball bat, cracks you over the head, and you go through these experiences, but, like, the reason why Batman was my favorite, and the whole idea of pain, it's like, growing from it, it's like, you have Bruce Wayne, who, his parents get killed in an alleyway, and instead of, you know, just going into depression the dude gets jacked like he, he goes he, off and trains he works out like massive and then he he goes he goes to he learns all these things becomes a, the greatest detective Great and one artist. one of the smartest people in all of comics and then comes out and then puts his life on the line and nobody knows it's him and everyone's ungrateful because they they don't see the hurt in his eyes that's the tragedy of batman because if you look at all the batman films it's like Playboy, billionaire Bruce Wayne. Um, it's like, okay, well, you know, what about philanthropist Bruce Wayne? What about guy who risks everything because he didn't let his demons consume him? He took his demons and took control of it and said, I'm going to use these to, to help other people. And then you have other characters like Dick Grayson and everything. They lose the same similar story and he helps. So that right there that is inspiring to me and i'm just like i you know on the surface it may be a silly little vampire story but i think that someone can get something out of it yeah um one thing that i i took from what you were saying is like life will kick your butt and there's a quote from my favorite professional wrestler that said life's a bully it'll continue to hit you until you stand up yeah yeah 100 percent. and you know like take things in your own hand and fight back because yeah. For the last like two years, I hit a really dark patch, and uh, like I couldn't leave my house for months last year, for like actually till January this year, and then you know like I got a girlfriend during that time, and then like I just started slowly just building myself up. And, like, just fighting back. you got to continue fighting, no matter what happens. And, and it's good that you say that, you know, you, you brought someone else into the mix as well. Because, like, in the book, like, my characters, they, they're they not alone. So, Vang has Echo. Mm -hmm. Echo. And, that, and that's the thing. If you guys are going through a dark time, you know, people listening out there, I'm not saying you need a romantic partner. Because Dana doesn't get another romantic partner. She has her sister. But you need somebody. A support system. You need somebody because nobody fights alone. No no man's an island. Um, it's like you, you need someone. I mean, especially, especially dudes. Like, dudes have a hard time. Like, as a guy, we have a hard time for whatever reason. Um, excuse me, asking for help. It's like, but guys, if you need help, ask. Like, reach yeah. out. No one's going to think less of you. It's like, yeah. we'll, we'll pull you up. It's okay. Yeah, this life is all about pulling each other up, you know? Like, if if 
if I'm up here, my job is to pull you up and mm -hmm. make you better or help you get better. You know, like I'm, I'm in a good place. Yes, things could be better, but I've noticed like I try to fight things alone all the time. I'm like, you know what? I could do this. It's like the like this pride that I have, mm -hmm. and then it gets worse until I completely just feel destroyed, and then I have to pick back up instead of reaching out and telling people like, hey, you know, like I'm, I'm a, in a problem. I actually started streaming on Twitch and I met a lot of really good people that also helped me through my mental health struggles, you know, like they, they support me and we don't know each other in person, you know, like you can get support system from basically anywhere and, you know, just reach out. Yeah. It's, yeah. And that's the thing too. It's like, like I said, you going back kind of to my novel as well, the, the heroes in my book, there's moments where they go out by themselves, right? They go off and they get their butts, butts thoroughly kicked. It's, um, they, they, but then they unite and come together, right? And all of a sudden they're unstoppable and they're doing things that are, you know, that like they're going up against the odds, but like it doesn't matter because they're working together. It's like the power of teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. Exactly. Especially when it comes to, you know, vanquishing immortal creatures of the night where it's like you know naturally you know people aren't doing that <laughs> but it's it's a metaphor guys it's like i the, mean there are you know, people it, in the it, night but yeah there's <laughs> there's de there's demons you know like, we all have demons and they're not you know physical blood-sucking entities but you know we we face them and the worst thing you can do is face them alone and the actual well, that's the second worst thing first worst thing you can do is let it consume you and you start doing to others what was done to you yeah or it's harming yourself or yeah something. that's yeah and that's really wow i i never realized that man the yeah just when well, now that i say it out loud my books are really a lot about mental health <laughs> now that i think about it it's <laughs> a lot of mental health it yeah. sounds like a lot of like police work it's everything that you we've talked about like in the past yeah it, are in your novels and they're on amazon correct yeah they're on amazon right now um easiest way to find them is on my instagram is i grab a link in the bio there's actually a sequel out too um it's it's available now it's so like the link is in my bio to the instagram and i'll send them all all the stuff you can yeah. put it in the description i'll put it in the description um but if you're just free searching on amazon uh just type in uh lamplight city of poison hearts or lamplight the patron saint and make sure you select books and filters because for whatever reason amazon and whoever made the uh the like the search algorithm if you just put in lamplight you get like tiki torches and like lighter fluid and it's just like nah you gotta put books in the search filters that should put, come up i'll put a link in the description for sure that way people that want to check out the book yeah. And it's, it's, it. and it's a fun story, guys. It's like, don't, I know it seems kind of dark and kind of grim, but there's jokes in it too. There's, there's a little bit of humor and it's supposed to be fun. It's a, it's a, it's a horror novel. It's supposed to be entertaining. There's, yeah, there's deep emotional themes behind it, but it's also supposed to be fun. And, um, I hope, I do hope that you guys do consider reading it, that you guys get something out of it. I had a lot of fun writing it and it was, and I'm still, I'm still writing. So I got a spinoff coming and. I'm going to do three in, a, in an actual trilogy. So last one will be coming up and then 20, 25, 26. Maybe, I don't know. Some are, I don't know. <laughs> when you have time to. Yeah. I don't know. Like I said, this is my little side project as a hobby yeah. and I want to do audiobooks too, but audio books would be really, I'm, I'm, I want to, I kind of want to do it, but like, I'm not sure how. So like, I'll figure it out. And just doing if research. I do it, I'll let you guys know. <laughs> yeah. Just doing research. You know, a lot of, I do a lot of audio books cause I have a hard time sitting there and just reading um i like to read but like it takes me a while because i'm just like i have so much going on in my head that i'm just like okay i gotta do this i gotta do this because i'm working on all, all these historical projects like oh will be before i forget to i want to give a shout out um actually this is the sequel right here this is the actual sequel yeah. and i wanted to point out the cover art uh a real good friend of mine her name is uh sammy bass she uh uh, just to give her a shout out. She she does art and uh, paints and does all, all this incredible work. And I like how I wish I brought the first one, but she kept like a central theme with it, with even with the colors and like the the fire and whatnot. Yeah, it um she d she did that herself. And all I take pride on doing all my creative projects, whatever they be. 
as independent artists and um, independent creators because it's like, you know, we all, I think the independent stuff is some of the best, like indie films, indie books, indie art pieces, sculptures, paintings, because they're not designed like in a boardroom or a studio. It's literally like just the, like someone literally ripped their heart out, cracked it open and and like now they're showing you the inside of it and it's it's just so beautiful so i love to all you independent artists rappers uh singers uh directors right whatever you do right that you express the inner goodness of you and all, all i think you guys are great um and i know how hard it is so i learned how hard it is oh, so really i love you guys you know god bless you yeah i do oh man i really want to do animated history that would be fun. my goal and then like using like dioramas to tell the story because i'm working on a the battle of hastings eventually but i want it to be dioramas and everything like just yeah. telling story right now i'm working on uh the battle of little bighorn i go all the way back to the when the united states settlers were coming into the southeast and then working my way all the way to the end of custer's last stand and I'm I'm happy with it because I'm telling the story, but at the same time I wanted it to be animated. I wanted it to be yeah. this big thing, but I'm like very impatient, so I have to like be like, okay, eventually it'll get to that point, but it's gonna happen. Um, but you know, like independent people, you know, keep doing what you're doing. Yeah, and especially like uh, I'm on Instagram a lot, and that's actually where you can find me. Um, I'll just throw it out there right now is uh, at Samuel Van Hugmode Books. I probably have to spell that out now that I say it out loud because my last name is a nightmare, but I'm not gonna do that right now. Again, I'll description. Put it in the description. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna we're gonna just go description. Yeah. Um, but maybe we could get your friend, your artist friend, to do yeah. an interview or whatever. But yeah, so like yeah, yeah, that that'd be cool. She yeah, she's out of town right now, yeah. but um, yeah, like I I'm on Instagram and I see a lot of things about like the AI art now mm -hmm. and a lot of like mainly independent artists like the like the painters and the the sketchers and the drawers and I, I don't know what what to call you guys other than drawers and sketchers guys I, I, I don't know <laughs> I know painters because they use paint but pencilists I don't know what I'm sorry I sorry if I offend you <laughs> I don't know what to call you um but I make my own words for you but the uh their big concern about it right now is because and actually I was watching uh marvel secret invasion and the opening credits i guess uh were all done by ai and a lot of artists are kind of upset now because they're like hey there's no soul in it it's a machine it's like skynet it's like you yeah. know it's like skynet's making making uh, art now Germany. <laughs> which i'd rather have skynet make me a picture than than, than, than become self-aware i'd rather keep it busy with pictures but yeah it's like you know that's and that's one thing too. I've actually this book is a hundred percent me. I had the the first book. I literally did all of it myself. I did the editing myself. I did the reviewing myself. Fortunately, with the second one, I had someone else step in to do the editing and everything. So the second one, in my opinion, is better because and actually, it's not like don't I didn't hire someone. My Thea actually, my Thea B, she uh, actually was nice enough to read all the pages and, and go through it so the second one is better quality but still an independent soul soulful production i think that's the bit one of my favorite films of all time is uh the evil dead series oh, dude that's and where the first one <laughs> was all just Sam b Ray. movie b movie like the special effects i know uh tim raimi is his brother right yeah he was one of the one of the um deadites Army of Darkness is my favorite. Oh, movie. that's my favorite one I too. I love I love Army of Darkness. I quote I I, I literally quote that movie with everybody and Ruby. Yeah, it's like it, but yeah, I that's that's another inspiration that that I had and actually it's really inspiring. It inspired the spin-off book because I love hearing Sam Raimi speak about like his creative process and yeah, it's film not not books, but it's the same concept and I love how the idea is, is it's just a bunch of guys where it's like, hey, we're going to make a movie. And they went into the woods and did their thing. Yeah, they made they made like a little prototype Evil Dead. I forget what they called it. And then it allowed him to do Evil Dead. The and then the dude makes Spider-Man. Years oh, later, he makes the first... Three. 
And on, and honestly, it's like because before, like around that time in the early two thousands, comic book movies were goofy, right? Like you had Batman eighty nine. Oh, I love. But it's like eventually they kind of became goofy again. No the, one, no the one Schumacher knew. Schumacher ones, right? Yeah, they, they they didn't know how to really balance the campiness with like the seriousness. And then Sam Raimi comes along, does the first Spider Man, and that's I took. So I took this ideology that he has. Where it's like if you kind of like take away the fantastic stuff, do you still have a solid a solid story? Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. If you like with my book, if you take away the vampire stuff, no one's a vampire, no one has supernatural powers or abilities. Do we still have a good story? And in my opinion, of course, I think it's good because I wrote it, so I'm a little biased. But I think we do because it's still a tragic love story. You take away, and it's still a solid like crime drama too. Yeah. So it's like. You know, you and that's where I think kind of like going off topic. The Marvel Cinematic Universe is kind of like teetering because they're they're relying too much on the fantastic. Where it's like it should be about people. That and I feel like it's too comedic now. Yeah, it's not like the original. Like it's like my friend just died. Let's crack a let's crack a joke. It's just yeah. like I think even like this is a hot take, guys. I don't. I didn't like Endgame. Oh, I did. I I wasn't really as big of a fan of it as I was of the um, the original Captain America movie, and not the one from twenty eleven, right? That was yeah. Like or like um, Iron Man because it wasn't super campy, or the original uh, the two thousand eight Incredible Hulk. Yeah. With Edward Norton, I think that one was by far the best Hulk movie. I've seen. Yeah, and it's like everyone's like like my favorite of all the Marvel films will. It, uh, it's till this day is uh, Captain America Winter Soldier because that one was good. it's a great political paranoia drama like a par- what how would you, how would I say they took paranoia away political away drama a lot of the the fa- fa- fantastical stuff and made it into an actual like you said a paranoia yeah. drama political yeah it's like from back in the day where it's like you would have where it's just like when people were like during the Red Scare the Red where Scare. people were afraid like oh. You know, like, that senator could be a communist, or, you know, this, the government has been infiltrated by the Soviet Union. It's like, just replace Soviet Union with Hydra, and then, and then like, uh, agent, you know, random agent with Captain America, and it's, it's the same thing, and that's why I loved it so much. It's yeah. like... I really think, like, the first, like, all the way up to, was it Civil War? I, I don't remember which was the... I haven't watched a lot of the... I liked Black Panther. Black Panther was fun. I just feel like it's gotten a little too, too oversaturated, and too hokey. Well, it's like it's well, it's like it's the thing like kind of like relating it back to like what your channel's about is history. Mm-hmm. You teach history in a very fun way, mm-hmm. and that's the thing because I I run into people who go I hate history I don't like history it's boring it's mm-hmm. just like, well because you haven't you didn't get taught right because mm-hmm. the key operative like word hidden in this, in in history is story, mm-hmm. and it's like these people and what's cool about history is like these people actually lived so like you know we talk about the fictionalized dracula um and uh we you know but we talked to by the inspiration vlad the impaler was he really the inspiration it, or is it loosely i think it's loosely um because there's also some people who think elizabeth bathory which she was an inspiration for me because the bad guys in the book they fly under the name the bathory um she she, was the queen of she was i think she wasn't a queen she was a i think she was like a noble woman Ah. but like a rumor was that she would bathe in the blood of virgins to keep herself young so i think that was part of what inspired uh bram stoker and then you have vlad the impaler dracula dracul son of the dragon um uh lord impaler he was something else yeah, he, yeah, I saw, uh, we were just talking earlier before uh, we were recording, I saw the documentary Mehmed vs. Vlad, or Vlad vs. Mehmed, on Netflix, which is a very good documentary, go see it, you'll learn a lot, and it's really fun, um, but yeah, he was medieval for medieval standards, <laughs> there's, he was insane, like, he was, people say he was insane, right? Well, this, this is how, this is how gangster Vlad Dracula was, this is how gangster he was, so that on Easter, I forget the date, don't, you know, I'm not, you know, like, I don't know the exact date and when it happened, but it was an Easter celebration. Um, Drac got a, or Vlad got a, uh, a pretty much learned that there was going to be a coup against him. He was Prince of Wallachia. There was going to be a coup to overthrow him, right? 
He invited everyone there to the Easter celebration, told them all off, and then executed all of them via impalement, which, if you guys don't know, impalement involves... It's not just getting rammed through, like, the chest or, you know, the, the stomach. No, this this is the Wallachian style of impalement, was you take this big pole, right, like this flagpole size thing. Put their whole body you, through it. You kind of sharpen the tip just a little bit, not too sharp. You insert the, the uh, pole through the rectum, and you put them up like a scarecrow. And they wax the pole so they slowly slide down. And if you are a master like executioner, they go over this in the in the documentary too. If you're a master executioner, you would miss every vital organ, prolonging the person's suffering. And he did this. Dracula did this. Vlad, uh, Vlad the Impaler did this crap on Easter. <laughs> And he, it's like, that's how, like, it's like, you can't get more gangster than that. It's just yeah. like. He, he, I remember watching, uh, what was that one show where they, like, put different, uh, what's it? It was, they put different history leaders or, like, military leaders against each other and, like, oh. simulated the battles. Oh, that'd be cool. What was that? I forgot. It was some show. Uh, battles like, BC? Or no. was it, uh, or, uh. It was on, like, Spike. Uh, it, or was it like they threw a ninja versus a Spartan? They, they, yeah. Oh, I know what it is. I, I know. Someone in the comments, put it in the comments yeah. because I know you guys know. I know you guys know. And, um, I, and I watched the one on Vladimir. Greatest Warrior, I think? I don't know. Uh, I'll have to look. Let me look it up. Let me look it up. Yeah, Greatest. Yeah. It's not, I'm thinking of America Ninja Warrior. That's not it. That's a whole other show. Or the but, Forged and Fire. I know Forged and Fire, but. That would be uh, Greatest, I think, something Warrior. Something, something Warrior. I, I know, know they had the one with Sun Tzu. They had the one with Sun Tzu and uh, forgot who else. Ooh, I, w- I would... was it Vlad the Impaler? It might have. I been. would. I would pair Sun Tzu with Julius Caesar. I would like to see that. Uh, that would that would be interesting. Or Alexander the Great. No, Alexander the Great would be good against Mehmed because Mehmed the Second was compared to Alexander the Great. Um, what Alexander did ex- in the expansion towards the east, Mehmed the Second. Deadliest Warrior. The deadliest Warrior. There you go. Deadliest. I knew it was something like yeah, that. Was the Deadliest Warrior. And I watched the one with Vlad, the Impaler, and he was like, yeah, he stuck things, spiked his people. And that's only one method. That's only one thing he'd do. And actually... He would drink the blood of his enemies, right? Supposedly. I know. Well, a lot of... That's the thing. That's... So, you know... You know the Bat- Batman Begins, how it's like theatricality and deception are powerful agents the uninitiated... That was kind of the thing. So I only, I don't know too much about Vlad's life before his conflict with uh, Mehmet the Second, but like during his campaigns, right during all his campaigns, including with Mehmed, he um he would just he was a master of psychological warfare. So he would do the impalement and leave the bodies out, but he would also send people who were diseased, right, with like the, with plague and. And pestilence they would he would send them out to the enemy camp so that he would infect the enemy he was perfect at guerrilla warfare which he would do these hit and run tactics he would use the cover of night one thing he did do as well and i saw this in a documentary is oh excuse me he would dress up in ottoman attire and he would dress his men up in ottoman he would slip into the camps and then out of nowhere they start start attacking people so he was like a ghost and like uh, he was basically Dracula. Yeah, he was he was a scary individual and like just just the idea of being captured by him or his men and uh, what fate would befall you if if you were captured and because he um yeah, he he would show no mercy. He was he was relentless. Yeah. It's funny you mentioned Mehmed. I'm actually of Turkish descent. Oh. So like I know a little bit about the Ottoman Empire and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and I did a, a thing on Mehmed a little bit a while a while ago. It was like a little short, and like, yeah, dude, he conqueror he... of Constantinople <laughs> from boy sultan to freaking conqueror of Constantinople. Yeah, yeah. and so he 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 went against. I don't even know who won that war. I'm still learning history Me- as I go. Mehmed, uh, uh, kind of spoiler, he, he ended up winning. Um, he, because his, so, here's the crazy thing about Vlad the Impaler. Uh, apparently, like I said, I, 
you know, I'm a big Dracula fan, naturally, so I was looking into the real-life Dracula, um, and so Vlad, he was given up by his father uh, to Mehmed II's father as a royal hostage, as in, like, okay, if you go to war with me and you betray me, um, because backing up Wallachia was uh, Hungary, yeah. right? And it kind of stems down to, sadly, what is still goes on today is Islam versus Christianity. And that's that's kind of like what it stemmed from. Um, and it's like, okay, you're not going to go to war with me, otherwise I'll kill your boys. So there's two. There's I think his name was Radu. Radu I pr- I'm mispronouncing it. Let us know in the comments. Yeah, Radu, like his brother, and Vlad himself. Well, Vlad's father betrays the Sultan, and they're kind of like given a... Somehow, for whatever reason, they're not killed, but they're raised under the Sultan's roof. And he grows up alongside Mehmed. And they... Like the Prince of Egypt. It's... I'm sw- <laughs> I, guys, you can't make this stuff up. I swear to God. It's like... Real history is far more fascinating than, like, any story because it's like, you think, no, 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 this is some Game of Thrones stuff, man. Like, this is some Game of Thrones things. You know, you, this this didn't happen. It's like, hmm. And it's like, it's so they grew up together. And, like I said, I'm a little fuzzy on, on you know, some details, you know, be that happened after. But Vlad, he resents the Ottomans. He, he resents them. His brother, on the other hand, kind of like warmed up to it. He even converts over to Islam, and uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, and, and he's he's like, no, I'm I'm fine being with these guys, and that kind of hurts Vlad. But yeah, towards at the end of the war, they, um, you know, the Wallachians they kind of lose, they lose out on it. Mehmed, he's able to put uh, Dracula's brother, Vlad's brother, into power. Which, here's the crazy thing, too. We, we were talking about impalement earlier. Um, so, when the Ottomans... I was watching this on... Like I said, watch the documentary. It's great, guys. It's like a docudrama. It's like they have, like, a- actual actors acting everything out, too. They, um... So, Mehmed and his genissaries, they're approaching Tragovista, the capital, right? And they're gonna take it now. They're, they're... It's like, the war is almost over. It's dead silent. There's Man. not a soul in the street. It's just, there's like a little mist, just silence. I don't think even the birds were, were chirping or nothing. It's just, and the Genissaries are freaked out because they've experienced months of psychological abuse from the Wallachians. And they, they're going through the city and like there's just nobody there. What had happened is Vlad evacuated the entire city and... Uh, and he fled himself, but what he left behind, um, was a forest, a literal forest of corpses, just spanning across, just people on, on pikes, um, impaled in the manner I described earlier, and pretty much Dracula was giving the finger to Mehmed, saying, it's just like, oh, congratulations, you took the city, but this is what you are, you're lord of the dead, you know, you you have nothing. We're giving you nothing. And throughout the entire thing, Dracula was doing a scorched earth policy. Was it Vlad? Yeah, Vlad. Was it Dracula or was it was his name Dracula or was It's it... Vlad Dracula because the Dracula was like the name, I believe the order that he belonged to, of uh, the dragon. It was it oh, came okay. from Son of the Dragon. Um but Dragon uh also has like, you know, like throughout the history has interpretations is that like the devil is described as dragon I don't know. Well, yeah. The, I don't. I don't know exactly. You know where that name originates from, but it's like House Dracula. Yeah. Um, it's like Vlad Dracula, it's just Son of the Dragon, yeah. which I think is is a cool name. I like son it. Son of the Devil. Or so, even, basically, right? Yeah. Even yeah. Yeah. It's to to the Ottomans. You know, he might as well have been. He might as well have been Son of the Devil, because that's 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 how and like. Because another crazy Dracula story they also show in the docu- that they also show in that documentary is the Ottomans they're trying to like get they're trying to bring Vlad to heel because he's not paying his tribute, he's not doing what he's supposed to, right? Because Mehmed the second allows Dracula, allows Vlad they grew to together. Yeah, to rule Wallachia. But there's talks that Vlad is talking to the Christian kings, talking to hun- the Hungarians um saying like hey you know we're gonna rally like 
I know how to beat this guy. I know how to beat the guy who took down Constantinople. I know how to beat him. And um, so that's why they're, they, he's sending embassies. Um, and in their culture, they can't remove their headwear. They can't remove the hats, right? And Vlad comes out and says, how come you're disrespecting me like that? And it's like, well, you, you know that we can't remove our hats. He goes, don't worry, you won't have to remove them again. Takes freaking like, spikes, these big metal spikes, and hammers the hat, through the hat, into their skull so they can never take their hat off again. Well, and it's... Dead. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, like, that's... How bad it's it It's just like, it's like, it's not enough just to kill the poor guys. It's, it's like, you have to, like, it's like he had to make an example like that. And it's like, he was very dramatic in his examples. He was mentally unstable for a while. Well, think about think about his upbringing. I think like, a lot. Think about and like kind of like I know I'm kind of like kind of another little. It's kind of like a little little plug, a little self plug in. But like with with my books and and the characters in both books. It's like their experiences shape them and kind of like at the end of the day you make a choice, right? You make a choice, but your experiences have a great influence. And imagine being a little kid. Your father gives you up to this random stranger you don't know, and you know that if your father screws up, you you'll be killed. And then you're under this house, and yeah, it's a palace, but it might as well be a prison because it's not like you can leave. It's not like you can go home. And then next thing you know, your father gets in a fight with this guy that you that you know you could be killed if if he if he did so, he loses. Yeah. <laughs> and now it's like. Is, you gotta make a choice, man. You do you swear loyalty to this guy that you know you don't really know, or do you accept your fate and bite the bullet? It's like, and some people would take the the way out. You know, they wouldn't. Some people are such nationalists that they would rather die for their country than. Well, Vlad Vlad played the long game. He he decided to play the long game, and and you know it's. Yeah, did he die during the war? Or? I think he escaped because, like I said, I I looked through the uh, the documentary and everything, and like from what I looked into, um, he ended up dying somehow later. Um, he got killed. I don't remember how, but yeah, Mehmed Mehmed took the day. Which, on a side note, is the only thing I don't like about the movie Dracula Untold, is in Dracula Untold, there's no mention of his brother. Um, but uh and Mehmed he he ends up killing oh spoilers but I mean come on the movie's been out for I don't know how many years it's been out for a while um it's on Netflix by the way I I, I watched it like six times <laughs> he kills Mehmed Dracula kills Mehmed in the, in the film and which and is kind of I'm just like I don't know I, I mean like I would have rewritten the ending a little bit differently and I would have rewritten, it, rewritten the movie just a little bit but I love it it's actually it's actually a really good a, a good film and the acting is great um the uh but yeah it's like it's and it's sad too because his wife drag in, in both the film and in actual like real vlad the impaler his his wife dies in the most sad horrifying way and it's like uh it, the vlad's real wife throws herself off of the balcony from their castle because she she promised vlad that she would not be captured. If he fell in battle, she would not be captured by the Ottomans. Unfortunately, there was a miscommunication because Vlad was still alive and well um, during this time. And it's like, I mean, like, you know, all I've ever wanted to be was loved by someone in that way. I can only imagine, you know, hearing that news. And then if you're already a savage like Vlad, could you imagine what that did to his mind? It's like he cranked it up from 11 beyond. He broke the scale because it's like now it's personal. It is a personal vendetta now. Oh I mean, earlier it was personal, but now... It's extremely personal. Yeah. And, and he took that personally. And he did pretty good. He did pretty good because at the time, the Ottomans had one of the most advanced militaries... Janissaries. In, like. in, yeah, the, in the world. Because, yeah, they had the Janissary Corps, which is kind of like their U.S. Marine Corps special, like... You know, like shock troops, right? That was, but they also had soldiers, normal infantry. They had, I believe, they had cavalry as well. But the most impressive thing is they had cannons. Which mm -hmm. these cannons back in the day, they just pretty much launched concrete, like like these big concrete balls, 
and they weren't explosive or they just launched this huge stone ball really really hard at great distances and yeah they had the advanced firepower and so compared you know thinking about and all that into consideration that Vlad did as good as he did, it's, it's something to say. It's like the Spartans at, Th- at Thermopylae, which it's like, it's like, yeah, they were completely out of number, but they did pretty good. You know, they, yeah, they, you know, they ended up fighting the dust, but for all things considered, they did pretty good. They, you know, they, they held their own for, for a while. Yeah. I remember, uh, so insane to talk about because, yeah, the, their military was advanced. And then I think, how advanced was the... What was the army again? The Wallachians? Wallachian? Uh, not that advanced. No? They had... <laughs> like, they, they, they used uh, guerrilla tactics. That's why. Because they didn't have the numbers and didn't have the technology. But they're just like... Like, their advantage was the shock factor. Yeah. Like, that he That was, was their advantage. He was shock rock before shock rock was yeah. a thing. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. It's like, if you ask, like, boxers and, like, MMA fighters. So, like, I did jujitsu for a short time. Um, and, you know, I did it for exercise and to gain a new skill. Um, you know, so like for me, I didn't take it too seriously, but there were dudes in there. They took it very seriously. They wanted actually not only to to have that skill set, but they wanted to compete. And then not only that, there was this one gal in there, I forget her name, but she wanted to do MMA. So she did Muay Thai and Jiu Jitsu. And you know, you add, and the trainer that I had, um, which, uh, you know, shout out to dethroned, uh, martial arts in Fresno, um, shout out to them. The trainer that I had there, his name, uh, well, I won't say his name, but, but, um, he, he was a fighter himself and it's like, you know, you talk to these guys and they're the nicest people, but they get in like this headspace and they look you in the eye and it's all in the eyes, right? It's, you Battles are won and fought. You hear this in history, but it's true. Battles and one, even one-on-one are fought and lost before they even began. And you talk to like these martial artists and these fighters, boxers. They said, you beat the guy before you even throw the first punch. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you, like, you, you see the MMA fights. They, they have to stare down. And, tip, and it's like, you know, that you stare them down. And all of a sudden, it's like, they, you know, one guy kind of you know, looks away or does something. It's like, oh, okay, you know, that, we got you now. You yeah. Know? And, like, any challenge, any challenge that you do, it's won or lost in, in the very beginning. Mental. Yeah, it's, like, it's, it's just as mental as it is physical. And Dracula was like, I'm going to break these guys' spirits. Yeah. You know? Yeah, I know, like, Mike Tyson was... Yeah, he, I think he said that. Like, he, he talked about he it. He talked about it. He, he was a scary guy even before he fought, you know, like... Me staring him down would be yeah, and then, you, and then the the ear thing too. Yeah, that was just like but like his sheer power, his punches. He can knock. Yeah, I think he knocked someone out in like the first round. Yeah, and it was like you know you knew he was he was good. I would hate to like face to face because I'm just like I'm done. There's no way. It's I'm like, all right, I'm let's go. Fight. It's just like all right. I, um, well, so, let's do it, I guess. So, yeah, Vlad used a lot of the scare tactics and things yeah. like that to break his opponents down. And then, I know, like, so he was the inspiration for Dracula. Yeah, I know and, a lot more about the fictional Dracula yeah, than, let, than, let, than yeah. the real-life so, Dracula. I, I did a little little uh, sh- short series of, uh, of uh, Bram Stoker, who wrote the book, was it 1897? 1896? See, I yeah, I think so. I I, I don't remember. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look it up right now because I it's 18 something. It's the late 1800s, and you know, like I'm barely reading the book right now. It's a it was. an excellent book. I um, I think I'm like five chapters in. Oh, 97. 97. So, it's like, so yeah, yeah. And when um, Jonathan, when you first. M- first meet uh jonathan in the beginning he he goes to the hotel and all the la- the, the old lady is like don't go don't go and she's like crossing it's, herself it, it sets it up because that's the whole thing about horror mm-hmm. it's like it's a horror like it, it's all right so this is a weird thing it's a weird comparison but i it's like flirting it's like uh romancing somebody kind of the weird twisted you know funhouse mirror version of romancing someone but like think about it 
it's like you know you you buy a gal roses you know you you know like caress her and everything and you know you say sweet words and you're building up to to this right horror is very the same way it's all about the build-up it's a flirtatious yeah it's like so yeah like you said like the villagers are like they're giving them crosses and they're just doing they're, they're doing this and they're and and he doesn't understand the language but they're like he understands like like there's there's something like why are they so freaked out and they're he's worried. not freaked out until he gets because he's it. just there on a job he's yeah. just like mm, okay but once he gets on the carriage he starts getting a little creeped out well what the thing is because the guy driving the carriage is dracula Dracula, yeah then you don't know that because he goes you know he you know like he's he's the he gets to the castle there's no servants there's nobody and it's like it's like hey um he brings up he goes yo um i didn't see anybody uh like i i haven't seen the only other person i saw was the driver and it's like and then like dracula's just like oh oh well you know they they have a night off or something like they i forget the excuse he makes but it's like, and and that's the thing. It's like Dracula sometimes, like nowadays, is very portrayed kind of like very like kind of like sexy, like sexy Dracula. But in the book, he's he's like a decrepit old, old man. man that's coming out, and he has like this white hair and like this like the little like I guess like a little mustache. little fu. I think uh, yeah yeah like a little like I I always imagine like the little Fu Manchu uh, mustache where it's like a little yeah, mustache yeah, yeah. here and a little like strand of hair right there. He comes out. He's acting super creepy. You know, he has the, the red, almost red eyes and the, the things that yeah, protrude it, out. Yeah, and, which, which the theory is that he hasn't fed in a while, which is why he looks like that. He's like, yeah. Because the villagers stay the hell away because they, they know. They're just like, which probably is one reason why he doesn't have any servants. Yeah, he probably eats them. I'm just kidding. Probably, yeah. Like they, and, and then, um, yeah, it's like they build up to this and... He, like, starts out old. And I think, uh, what was it? The one made by... the What movie was it? I think the one made with Christopher Lee portrays that. And then the one in 92, yeah. the one with uh, Gary Oldman portrays oh, him Oh, that's it. I was talking man. to my Thea about it just now. I was talking to my... I was like, I go, Keanu Reeves is in it. Uh, Anthony Hopkins is in it. Who played Dracula? I go, Gary I see... Oldman. Yeah, Gary Oldman. And they like, do a perfect job. They did, and, like... He starts out as an old man in these two films, and like people like to portray it as like very like oh macho Dracula. Dracula was decrepit for like half the book, right? Uh, for a good part, but like as slowly like I think if I remember correctly in the book, they describe him like he starts getting better looking mm-hmm. as because he's 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 feeding off of Jonathan yeah. and his brides like the they uh, here yeah that his brides you know show up and they. And like they, Lady, ladies, oh, yeah, and like it's it's like it's yeah they 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 start showing up too, and then like he sees Dracula crawling on the side of the wall, mm-hmm. and he looks out and it's like, and then he know. commands the wolves because they, he's like okay leave you know, and then after yeah it's like things are not right, it's like things are not right, and then Jonathan gets the whole idea to creep out of his window because he's locked in his room right. Well, that's the thing. It's like the. The, the castle itself is working against Jonathan because mm. it's like the architecture is just, it's the way it's set up is just so strange. And it feels like he goes, it's like, it feels like he's changing. And what I love about the book is, and I actually took inspiration for my novels is that there's journal entries. So mm-hmm. like Vang's perspective is actually a journal. You read it through his first person. So it's like, it's like first person Vang, third person um, uh, Dana, and so Jonathan. Yeah, you're reading his journal entries, and it's, like, it's creepy because it's just like, well, does he make it? Because well, we have his journal, but did you know, he survive? Only does he the make first it? First three chapters so far that I'm reading are about Jonathan. It's yeah, from Jonathan's Jonathan's point of view, and and like, I'm like, did he survive? You know, because he Mina hasn't heard from yeah him since like June. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. It's like it's like a mix of a Victorian romance novel and like a subplot right there. Because mm-hmm. Mina is like waiting for her, her fiance to come back, and then Lucy, which I here here let, let me address th- this about Lucy. Uh, I forget her last name. I can't um, remember. I just but, but Lucy, which is Mina's friend, she like all oh, for whatever reason she's uh, she's she's kind of like portrayed like a thought almost you know like in every like you know 
in every like depiction where she's just like she's very promiscuous and everything. It's like in the book she's, I mean like there's there's four there's at least four guys like asking for her hand in marriage. It was the but three, it's right? It was uh, oh, four the, or three. It they, was the the doctor the the psychiatrist guy. It was yeah. the cowboy from Texas, and then it was Arthur. Yeah, so three. All right, I miscounted three. Um, I, got but it's fresh, like, I got fresh. She's not going with all of them. It's like she's not going with all of them. But it's like I don't. That's kind of. I guess in the Victor. I, I guess Victorians. Like you know, that's that's that's. I don't know. In the for some, there's like a loss. Like a, there's there's like a loss in translation there where she's just like crazy. But compared to Mina, Mina's very like reserved. But compared to Mina, Lucy's more open. Out there, yeah. Which is why when Dracula shows up, she's one of the first victims. <laughs> really, I haven't gotten. Oh there shit, yet. that's right. You know, oh, oh. excuse my excuse my French. Um, but um, yeah, you. That's right. So yeah, it's a little little spoiler. Yeah. No, you're good. Um, look, I'm gonna get to the end of the story regardless if it's spoiled or not. I mean, when Star Wars, what is it, seven? All over the place. I knew Han Solo gets killed, you know, before mm-hmm. I even saw the movie. I was like, I don't be commenting. Spoiler alert. It's like that movie's been out for so long, everybody knows. I don't care about spoilers. <laughs> like, I don't go to the movies often. So, like, I read about movies before they come, before I watch them, if the movie has been in theaters long enough. Well, also, if the twist is good, like, there's an argument. Like, if, like, the, like a plot twist is good, it won't knowing about it will not affect your enjoyment of it because these there are some people who do like a plot twist and it's just a shock factor it's like oh you know like you didn't see that coming did you but the best plot twists are the ones that when you rewatch something you see the clues like mm-hmm. oh it's coming you ever watch a fight club I actually haven't, but oh, I do know I, I do I, know you know the plot twist yeah so but I saw the clips that let's like it's like they it's throughout like, the whole movie. Like, I was, the first time I watched it, um, my my sister and my and her, and her uh, ex-husband <laughs> were, uh, were like, you need to watch this movie, there's such a big plot twist. And I was watching, and there's like, his name is different, and every, every, uh, every group he goes to is a different name. And he acts like a different person in every group. And I'm like, the guy has multiple personalities. And I didn't even see Tyler Durden in the background until later on. But they're like, you got that? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, look, I've they, been... They in... leave the little breadcrumbs. Yeah, I'm like, I've been <laughs> I've been down the mental health road so long that I know a thing or two about mental health. And what this... And he doesn't seem right. He had multiple personalities. I don't, but, you know, I was just like... Yeah. They're like, you got that? I got it, like, within, like, the first hour. Yeah, and maybe. that's, and that's like, a good story tell. That's a mm-hmm. good... Especially, like, I think, honestly, filmmaking... You know, this probably will tick off a lot of writers, but I think filmmaking, like, is it, a little bit harder than writing a book. Because a book, you can really describe and go into detail and explain it. Mm-hmm. But with film, you have to show it. Yeah. And because if you just, like, talk at, like, if you if I just talk at, you know, the people watching right now and saying, well, and they, oh, oh, I'm feeling this way and I'm feeling this, it's not very interesting. But, like, if I show, like, little subtle hints and the actors and everything, then it's like, like, oh, okay. Like, they have to basically pull off a magic trick. With writing, it's more like, here's how the magic trick works. Yeah, we can explain stuff. Yeah, with the with the movie or film, if done right, they pull off like little magic tricks throughout the movie and to show you, show you like little things until you get to that. Yeah, end. speaking of, of shock factor too. So, um, this so one reason why Dracula is was very pioneering is because a lot of the tropes that we have today originate from that so like in the victorian novels um you know like nowadays you know like this you was know after how... the industrial revolution right because i know mary shelley did frankenstein during the it might have been it might it might have been mm-hmm. 1890 yeah yeah that yeah i think yeah so the thing is about that is um you know like for example the movie alien right they they go to the planet right they go to the planet and the face hugger jumps on the guy and they, they, they leave, right? They leave the planet. It's like, okay, we're safe. Oh, no, the aliens come with with us. Hello. That's kind of like where that trope comes from is like Dracula is that the horror follows, you know, the people home. So mm-hmm. Dracula's plan, um, because the reason why Harker is even there is because he's like a legal clerk and he's organizing. Dracula's going to move to England. 
And at first, it's just like, okay, why do you want to do that? He bought several properties, right? And uh, so Dracula, which actually there's a movie coming out. I'm excited to see. It's called The Last Voyage of the Demeter. And it tells the story of this. It's a small part in the book. It's a small part. But Drac there's a ship that comes across. And it pretty much crash lands, right, on the English coast. And no crew are found on it. It's abandoned. But a, a, a wolf jumps out and just runs. Like, people see this, like, this big, a huge wolf just runs and jumps off and runs away. And on the, the only thing that's left is, like, the, the captain's notes. And I believe the captain, like, they find a guy tied to the wheel. Like, tied to the, like, to the wheel of the ship. And he's dead. He's, you know, is he's, this he's in the movie or in the book. This book. is the book? Yeah, he's deceased. And they find, thir like, I forget how many boxes, but there's a lot of boxes of Transylvanian soil. And part of the ah. vampire lore, lore in that is a vampire has to sleep in a box of the soil of their home country, that's of their homeland. Sleep. So that's why he has the boxes. Mm -hmm. And that's how Dracula gets to England, is through the ship, the Demeter, which in, in August 11th, uh, this movie's coming out. And it's going to tell like, an interpretation of that, of what happens on the journey. I'm like, ah, I'm so excited. That is so cool. <laughs> I'm so excited. I, uh... I really like the book, and for me, it's hard to get into books sometimes. Um, I really love the Jurassic Park book. I don't know. If I've read it. it. Yeah, I need to read the second one. But I've read the, the first one. The second one, I am having a hard time finishing. I, I don't think it's as good. The first one, I like the book better than the movies. Yeah, yeah, I, no, yeah. The book is insane. I mean. Oh, I can't. I'm not gonna spoil that one. Well, yeah, the the op well, I'll, we'll just talk about the opening real fast because the opening is my favorite part. Mm -hmm. Is they they bring that poor kid into the doctor's office and the doctor is just like, well, what happened? To him? Oh, he got run over by a backhoe. <laughs> it's just like there's no. These are animal bites. No, 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 no. It's a construction accident. He got run over by. It's like, dude, why are you being so sketchy? It's and like he's well, like, is this saliva like on his wound? Like what is? And, and it, it just smells. Like, and then he and then he he says the word rafter. And it's just like, Raptor, what are you talking about? And she Googles it, and the bird of prey comes up. But what he means is a, a dinosaur attacked him. And or the, the, the village people. They get off the island, too, in, in the book. They mm -hmm. they actually, the raptors get off the island. The compies get off the island. So in the in the book, the, the village people are, like, crossing themselves, too. Like in Dracula, you know, because they're just, like, raptor. And they're, like... They, they're like, it's what the, they're talking about, like, a, a thief of the night. Like, yeah, basically, it, it's Dracula. Yeah, yeah, it's like, and yeah, it's like, it's like, yeah, it's like I said, it's like, it's like a flirtation. It's mm -hmm. like, you slowly build up, because it's like, even in horror films, right, I hate jump scares. I hate them. They're the cheapest scare. I do not like them. But a earned, one that's earned... Uh, okay it's like all right that one was earned because it's like you you develop it and like a proper jump scare is not even something that's scary jumping out it's like you, you know they build up the ambience and you're so it's like you ever been so nervous somewhere like i remember i, I was <laughs> i was outside i used to live in the country i was outside i was looking for this stupid cat we had this cat and i was looking for, for him and i was like where's this damn thing at i'm looking it's, it's dark i just finished watching i think it was like uh, Dawn of the Dead or something, you know, some something like that. So I'm a little on edge. I'm a little, uh, you know, like it's late. It's like late at night, and I'm like, I'm thinking about this stupid movie, <laughs> and my heart's going right, like, and I'm thinking like, man, what's that? like, what if like there's some like, what would you do in that scenario? Like something crazy in the dark just runs at you right now. All of a sudden, I hear this noise, this scratching. Like this rapid, like scratching on the fence, on this wooden fence. I legit scream. I legit scream like a little girl as I do a, an about face. Oh, yeah. And it's the stupid cat that's right there. And I'm like, get inside. Like, I am so. But that was earned. That's like, that's what I mean. Like, like I was over it. Like, slowly, like, I was freaking myself out, wondering what was out in the dark. And then it's like something simple as like the cat coming up just scared me. Yeah. I, uh,. I think I was watching, I can't remember, it was like a, a movie about demon possession. And like, I was like, at night, you know, like, I'm not afraid of it, but that movie like, kind of like, 
made me that's the best theory. horror it kind of stays with you yeah a lot like dracula following you know going to england and coming onto the home front uh if a movie stays with you that's how it, you know it's like like evil dead the original evil dead mm-hmm. stuck with me and that was made what in the 70s 81 it, it came out like in the 1980 or an yeah it, it's, but it was made in the 70s it stuck with me <laughs> yeah i don't get scared easily i mean i have constant not right now but constant anxiety so like it's very hard to scare me with a movie and like i watched what was it it the the part one part two i was uh. like this guy's gonna come out from behind there and then this guy's gonna come out behind there and i was just like oh this movie stinks yeah i i was bored watching it but like a really good like movie alien i'm not scared of it but it was eerie I can only imagine being audiences seeing the Xenomorph for the first time. Because they didn't even show him like all the way until the end. Yeah, it's like it's like imagine because nothing like it has, and like it's like Dracula. Like, no, at the time, nothing like Dracula was made. Mm-hmm. Like right now, we know like kids dress up as Dracula for Halloween, and like he's not that scary anymore. There's also Frankenstein. It's, it's a challenge to make Dracula scary now because mm-hmm. either now he's sexy, he's romanticized, you know, or He's like, he's on a box of cereal, uh, Count Chocula. Or he's on a uh, hotel <laughs> Yeah, it's like, it's like, but it's like, it's it's hard to make him scary now, but you gotta keep in mind, like, back in the day, in the 1800s, Dracula's being introduced for the first time, and he is a horrifying creature. Almost like Darth Vader, right? Yeah, he's a horrifying, mo- like, yeah, he's like, he's a lot like Darth Vader. Like he just, he walks into the room and like flowers die. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so be, and actually, but it was, it was, it was a benefit to, I think culture as a whole, because before that vampires were just like a general term for the undead. They were just creatures, just mindless creatures. Actually in ancient Mesopotamia, every culture has had a vampire. Every culture ha- has had a vampire, and that is one reason why in modern vampire fiction there's so many subtypes and, and species. So, like, in ancient Mesopotamia, there was this creature had the head of a lion, wings, and the body of a man, and it was said to drink the blood of people, like of children or something. And then you go to Romania, you have the Strigoi, which is kind of what the vampire, like, Dracula's vampire is. It's like, it's this creature who feeds on human blood, come, is undead... It could turn into bats, it could turn into a wolf, it can change shape. Then and you have the Twilight vampires. <laughs> I mean, they're... I'm not gonna lie, I kinda, I, you know, I was kinda like on the hate train when it came out in middle school, but I rewatched a couple of them, and they're eh, not too bad. Not too bad. They're not my favorite, you know, I'm but... not really into it, I was just... Because it was popular when I was a senior in high school, yeah. and it was just like, this is lame, this isn't I mean, Dracula. I mean... It could have been better. It could have been better. But it's not as bad as people were making it out to be. Like, I'm like, oh, okay, this is not as bad. Yeah. Because then right after I watched Fifty Shades of Grey, and I'm just like, yeah, okay, Twilight wasn't too bad. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah. there's different subsets of, of vampires and stuff. And... Yeah, and, and, that's, and that was the cool thing, because, because before, vampires were just kind of like creatures, just like mindless creatures, like a zombie, right? It's kind of kind of like that. Um, but Dracula... Cr- create a character for the vampire I think he's and, so well written. and now it's like you know with character you can put motivations you can put development you can alter it and change things and it it altered the uh, literature forever it was very influential and it still is to this day just in its like like you made you made a wonderful connection. I didn't even think about the opening to Jurassic Park, Michael Creighton's Jurassic Park, and the opening of Dracula. It's like yeah, it's the same thing pretty much. Yeah, you have people afraid of and, this and, thing that they don't even know what it and is. A, and a baby gets got. Oh yeah. Yeah, they. Uh, I I can't I can't go into do it because you probably put it on YouTube, and I know YouTube is really like sensitive, so I won't go into detail about that. Read the book. Read the two books, and then you you'll, you'll find people, out. People who are watching this have probably read the books. Yeah, it's or, just like, you or, know what I'm talking about then. Or yeah. interested in it. Yeah, it's like, yeah, a li- little Happy Meal is made. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, it's, I'll put, I'll just there, because I don't want this thing being taken out. That's the thing about YouTube, too, I've, I've heard. It's just like, they're really, like, sensitive, and I don't, I don't want to screw yeah. anything up. No, you're good, man. I, I do this for fun, mostly. Um, I do have, like, 
my actual his this is more podcast based yeah um and more of my historical like what ifs i want to do what ifs oh yeah that'd, me that'd be bit. fun um because i know you're like very knowledgeable on things and yeah I'm, a little bit of everything i'm not like i'm learning as you guys are learning and so like i want to do what ifs eventually i want to do like the, like i said the animated diorama type storytelling because I watched Star Wars as a kid, you know, and like the way they made the Death Star blow up, like the, what the, when they would drove, drive by on the Jeep, that's like my ultimate goal is to make like a World War II documentary like that. Yeah, that would be cool. I want, and honestly, I want, I would want to do that. I would want to like, I like the actors, like in like a, like, you know how they have recreations? I, that'd be cool. I want to, I want to have reenactments, like people reenact, like me direct, but like have like a, a soldier and like how things are done and like um i watched dark side of the ring it's a pro wrestling thing and they tell like the dark side of pro wrestling a lot of them are drug addicts <laughs> um but like they have reenactments but the faces are blacked out you know yeah but like they show like different things that happened and i'm like that'd be so cool yeah um oh yeah but yeah yeah that that would yeah, that, that would be freaking... That would be awesome. Eventually, I gotta find people. Yeah. I think you'd be a good soldier. You, yeah. You have the, the build of a soldier. Yeah, I'm just like, yeah, let's go. You know, let's like, do I, this! I, I, might, I might, like, call on you for that, to do, like, reenactments yeah. for me. If you want to do... Like I said, if you want to also do scenes from Dracula, like I said, I know that book very oh, yeah. well. Actually, fun fact, um, so I actually really got exposed to Dracula in high school. Um, I remember I had a teacher. She told... So... There's actually a deleted chapter in the book. Really? But it's attached. It's recently been attached, kind of like it's its own short story. Um, and according, like I said, this this could have been just her trying to freak us out, but it was around Halloween time. She's telling the story. It's called Dracula's Guest. So Harker is not the first guest oh, of Dracula's I, Castle. I can tell. It's this guy. We talked about that, right, in the first one? In, like, the first few chapters, he's like, oh, you're not the first. Yeah, yeah, and... And, well, this this guy, he's going to Dracula's castle, and I, I haven't read it in a while, so I'm a little fuzzy on it, but they he goes and he stops off in the cemetery. And he's looking around the cemetery, and all of a sudden he, he notices something, and he goes to this mausoleum, and there's a burning woman on fire. Like, she's, like, burning alive. She's screaming, and she's, like, reaching out, trying to climb. It's, like, really freaky stuff. So he bails, right? He takes off. This guy just takes off. And all of a sudden, he feels like the hot breath of a wolf, like right on the right. back. And you, and like he's like, like is this, is this the end, right? Is this, is this it? And then all of a sudden, the wolf goes away. He's looking around, and then Dracula shows up and welcomes to Transylvania. Hello. <laughs> and it's like the the wolf is Dracula, and it's fun. And, and, and I didn't make this connection, but I when I was wrapping up Dracul. Um, the ending ties in. I think it ties. I was like looking it up, and I had to the both books. I'm looking at both of them because I, I think the ending of Dracul ties in to Dracula's guest. But according to this teacher of mine, they wanted it pulled out. Like a lot of people wanted it pulled out because it was too close to actual events in the air. So, is Transylvania um a haunted land? Maybe I don't know. Um, Could be, I don't know. I was, you guys decide. I was, I was baptized. I, I remember I told my dad, um, I was telling him earlier, my dad, before he met my mom, actually studied to be a priest, right? He was, like, was going to be a Catholic priest, but then that didn't work out. He goes, nah, it's not for me. Um, but he, I remember we were talking about vampires, werewolves, and like we, we got into something like aliens or Bigfoot or something. And I made a good point because he was just like, Nah, none of that stuff is, is out there. None of the stuff is real or, or, or nothing. Like, there's no, like, aliens or Bigfoot or nothing. And I said, well, Dad, here, let me put this, let me put this in perspective. We're Catholic, yeah? You know, we're, we're, we're baptized Catholic? He goes, yeah, yeah, you believe in, you believe in Jesus Christ, right? Right? It's like, so, we believe in a man who was executed and then rose from the dead three days later also, before that, brought another man back from the dead, turned water into wine, walked on water. You see, it's like, well, and I, I said, you see, we're, we don't have to be automatically accepting to the paranormal, right? But we can't, we, we don't have the luxury of being immediately dismissive either. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not saying vampires and werewolves and ghosts and goblins exist. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying 
you can't be automatically dismissive. And yeah. it's, uh, yeah, and, and he stopped. He's like, <sighs> okay, okay, fair point. That's, that's a fair point. We can't be automatically... I, I, I said, yeah, I'm not saying they actually are out there. I'm just saying we can't be automatically dismissive of paranormal claims and mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. Because, yeah, there's some people, like, they, they'll just laugh and then yeah. Like, I don't mess with Ouija boards. I don't mess with that at all. I don't have a death wish. Yeah. <laughs> I have I, enough stuff rather than inviting a demon to terrorize my house. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's... I know Frankenstein was written before that, right? Is Is he, like... An actual, not Frankenstein the person, but the monster. Oh, the monster? How scary is he in the books? Oh, actually very scary. Is he more scary than the movie? Yeah, very scary. So I read Mary Shirley's Frankenstein 2. I, I, I read that as well. and Which is one thing I don't understand. For whatever reason. He's just so the book takes place in the 1700s. But they don't finish the year. Like, if you read the book, if you actually read the book, guys, like, it's weird. I If someone knows, please uh, put it in his comments so he can tell me why. But, like, it'll be, like, 17, and it'll cut off. It's like, okay, so 1700s, but what what exact... Like, there's no exact year. 17XX. Yeah, it's like, I don't know why they do that. Well, they why do... she did that. And, like, it's so... It's so... That's the creepiest part for me, because I don't know. But the Frankenstein's monster is horrifying because he's actually he's not like this lumbering so like you see the movies like he's like a lumbering creep no he's intelligent because what happens is he's created right mm -hmm. victor victor frankenstein by the way not a doctor doesn't finish medical school no no he does not finish the school and this is why because he he creates this you know the creature and he's freaked out because the eyes because the eyes and it freaks him out so he runs and hides the monster feels abandoned. It's not even a monster, really. He's 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 an intelligent. He's being. he's another. He wouldn't be Homo sapien. Well, I mean, technically he would be, but he's a well, or he he's an amalgamation of different body parts. So I don't know what you would call him. He's a humanoid. I guess yeah. So he runs out and he runs into this blind man. So like everyone's scared of him because he looks. He I'm looks, sorry, I'm thinking of young Frankenstein. Yeah, no, exactly, exactly. I swear to God, I'm not making this up. It's like that. You, where do you think the inspiration came from? So he runs out there and he reads like Paradise Lost. He reads all these books. He educates himself, and he starts working through life like Victor, the scientific method. He learns how to use fire and shit, and oh. Um, and oh, excuse my friends, I'm sorry. Um, but he learns how to use fire. And, uh, he, uh, he, and, and the family comes back and chases him off and he burns down the person's house. Oh, the because, blind man? Yeah, because he's, he's also, and it kind of, again, it kind of, no wonder I like that book so much because it goes, it goes back to the principle. It's just like, he's hurting. This, this, this poor creature is not a monster. He's in pain. He was abandoned by the, it's like, it'll be like meeting your creator, right? Like maybe... Oh, parent. yeah like a parent right and then um, maybe some of you guys are out there have had this experience where it's like you meet the parent and you, your parent and it's just like hey dad hey mom you know i'm i'm your kid you know and they go we don't want nothing to do with you and they close so the how door how long is victor frankenstein in the movie or book how long is he the whole thing yeah so you follow him around mostly he doesn't die Oh, uh, no, he, he does, because what happens is, and spoilers, but guys, come on, it came out like 18-something. <laughs> but read the book anyway, seriously, even if, because I knew all of it going in, and I, and I still enjoyed it. So, so pretty much, Victor goes back home, and he's going to marry this, this woman uh, who his family had adopted, right? So, kind of like a step-sibling. There's a joke in there, I'm not going to do it. Because I want to keep this family friendly. There's a joke in there, but you all know what I'm getting at. Um, but no, so his, uh, so he he loves this woman. He's gonna marry her. The monster show, the Frankenstein's creature shows up, right? And I hate using the term monster because he's really not. A, it's not his fault, really. Because imagine being born into a world you don't understand, and then having to learn, and then you being abandoned by the the person who made you. It's like it's, and you have to learn everything yourself. So he's like a child who was abandoned, right? But he's very intelligent. He meets Victor, and Victor is like, you know, are you here to kill me? And and um, he goes, 
he says, uh, he says, you know, you you have you owe me something. You owe me. Nice. And he and Frankenstein mon- and, and the, the, Frank, the creature tells the story right in the, about you know how he became educated, what happened, and he goes, "You will make a a person for me. You will make a mate." So he's telling Victor he has to recreate his uh, his crime against nature, and Victor is saying like, "No, I am not doing that." He goes, he goes, I, it, and actually before this, before he meets. Frankenstein's brother, Victor's brother, was murdered. And the creature says, I killed your brother because he learned. And he goes, what's your last name? And it's just like, Frankenstein. And Remember, like, Frankenstein is not the monster. Yeah, that's the name of the, the man who made him. And and uh, and so Victor's like, you killed my brother. And like, and, and like, he's like, you know, he's, he's, he's just like, he, he, he's freaking out, right? And he's having this existential crisis. And he goes, fine, I'll do it. I'll, I'll make you. And he goes, he goes, you better. He goes, otherwise you're pretty much going to regret it. It's like, do this or else. And so Victor goes, he starts doing it again, but he gets cold feet, right? He does it. He destroys it. He destroys the, the creation. And he, he's, he's not going to make the female version of Frankenstein. He's not going to make Frankenstein's bride. He's, he's going to destroy, he destroys it, gets rid of it, ticks off. The creature, like he's now beyond pissed off. He's beyond infuriated. He's he is furious at this point, and I'm and so he ends up murdering uh, Frankenstein's friend, right? Clavar, Clavarte, I believe his name was. I forget the names. I might have actually murdered him before. I might have gotten that mixed up, but. Um, so the point is, he kills his, his best friend, and then, uh, and the, uh, one of, uh, the family friends, right, one of, a, per- a woman that Victor knows is blamed for the murders, right? And this is how big of a piece of garbage Victor Frankenstein is. He keeps his mouth shut during the interrogation of this woman, the trial and execution of this woman. So he gets what's coming to him. And, and and so it's like, and then and then the monster right tells you know the the creature tells Victor, I'll be with you on your wedding night, and disappears right because he learns that like you destroyed my bride. You were gonna make me a, a person who looked just like me, who was just like me, but the reason why Victor got cold feet is because he started thinking it. He started thinking. He started going like. Okay, I made a superhuman. What if I make another superhuman? They get together. They like each other a lot. They have little superhuman babies. Oh, I just killed my species. Okay, okay. Well, what about the other scenario? They hate each other. Now I have two pissed off superhumans at me now. I gotta destroy this thing. So he he stops it. Well, his one night comes and and finally victor is kind of relaxing a bit you know it's the honeymoon now and and just as about things are, are gonna get going boom the creature breaks in kills his new fiance and which victor now starts pursuing the uh creature. the creature and they wind up in like the arctic and victor <laughs> because this this is this is how this is how the story is being told is victor is telling it in the past tense to this uh, ship captain, because the book starts off with uh, the, I'm kind of going out of order, but yeah, so it's... be it. Um, the the ship captain finds you know Victor near death, right? And he's just like, "What are you doing out here? Like, there's nothing for miles." And he tells the story like, "You're not gonna believe this, but just listen, just hear me out." Well, the monster shows up on the ship and is with Victor in his final moments and. That's kind of how the story is. So ends. the monster doesn't actually die. I don't. I don't. Or is think, it ambiguous? I think. I think it's left. I forget if he. I think he just wanders off. He to go die. Yeah. Because he's just like. He's just like it's. It's a sad story. It ends tragically. There's no like. Like at least Dracula kind of has somewhat of a, mm-hmm. you know, like happy ending, but. Frankenstein, it's a sad, tragic story. It's a lot like the original Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. That's the next book I want to read. It's, it's a sad, and it's like, you know, it's just like, it's, it's yeah, I, I, I reread it sometimes, and I'm just like, 
Like, I, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, no, Victor, just do it. You do it this one thing differently. And it's like when you watch uh, Star Wars 3. Oh, and you're yeah. just like, come on, Anakin, don't no, do that. That's, that's me with uh, the Fives episode when he's going to tell the Jedi about Order 66. And yeah, that's, that's the Fox one. kills him. Yeah. And it's just like, no, Fives! It's like, and that's a good prequel. That's mm-hmm. how you know if a, of, of a, of a prequel is good or not. Like a little side note is if you get, like, because you know it's going to happen. Order 66 is inevitable. Mm-hmm. But you root for Fives and you, like, you're like, come on, Fives. Like, you're actually, like, even though you know, like, he's going to fail... You forget that for a minute, and you're just yeah. like, no, Fives, you can do it. And then it's just like, oh, that's right. He has to fail because in order for episode four through six to happen. Mm-hmm. Uh, it just makes me, like, when I watch it, I'm just like, come on, don't do that. Yeah. Don't do that. And it, like, almost brings me to great emotion. Yeah, you can go on and on about Mary Shirley's I'd Frankenstein. Read, I, I might pick that one up from the library. Or I'll, I want to pick up Jekyll and Hyde. Oh, Jekyll and Hyde is a good one too. I know, I know what happens at the end, but yeah, I think that's they made one. they made musical. They made a musical about it. I mean, it's not just it's not exactly like the book, but it's still pretty good. David has David Hasselhoff is in it. Really? Yeah, I remember I uh, I watched it all on YouTube, and it was actually pretty good. I was just like, but it came out during the time when Phantom of the Opera blew up, so a lot of like productions were trying to like get Phantom. Of- they're they're trying to get fan of the opera feels and uh, you can you can see it in there. Never read fan. Is that a book or a play? Uh, it's the play. So I got exposed. I'm a big fan of the opera fan. So like I love the musical and the and, and the and the and the play and the theater of it. I I've seen the movie multiple times as well. Everyone kind of hates on the movie um, because it's not the it's not the actual production. Which honestly, guys, I've seen it in in person before. If you can go see it in person, it's better than any film. Um, but it's like, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it, it was based off a book though. There's actually a book, but let's be honest, the musical is better. Yeah. It's, it, 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 it's like, you want to read it or do you want to be sung to for, for the next two hours? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. They, and they made a sequel too, but the sequel bombed a little. Well, they tried to catch lightning in the bottle twice and they ended up getting electrocuted. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, we should talk about more horror stuff, historical stuff, that'd be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's, because, yeah, real history is actually really horrifying, like I said, the real Dracula is, is equally as horrifying as the, it's his fictional counterpart, mm-hmm. because it's like, um, yeah, it's like, because it's, it's really sad in, in, in a way, because the because people have been horrible to each other for so long but Mm -hmm. in that horror that and that's one good thing about uh, what i like about horror too is like when you write it in in uh like you're you're watching a scary movie or something yeah you're being scared and horrified but you're facing your fears it's kind of like the old school fairy tales old school fairy tales are haunting oh yeah (laughs) they're they're haunting but like even now humans human beings we we still have that need to like communicate through story and with a horror story, you can face your fears. And when you get, and that's the thing, heartbreak, when I wrote the book, there's no, it's not tangible, right? It's not like your heart literally got affected. Um, there's no like physical ailment. It's just, it's just you're in pain and you can't do anything to fix it. So I took my heartbreak and I created a monster. I created monsters and demons, like physical forms. And once that you vanquish those, right, in the book, they get, you know, like, you know, my heroes fight them and, and go toe-to-toe with them. And, you know, I can fight. I fight my demons that way. I write them down. I give them a physical form. I make a villain. And then I create something to fight that villain. And... It, it, it helps out. It helps out a lot. So I think that's one benefit of even like real life horrors. There's, you know, you give them a, a name, you give them a physical characteristic and you can confront it that way. It's like in psychology, it, like when you have a fear of something, you have to name that fear. Yeah. Face that fear or else it's going to consume you. Same thing with heartbreak. You know, it, can, it I've seen it happen to where it just consumes you to sickness yeah it's and that's that's a dangerous thing because it's like and then like i said then you start teetering on becoming a monster yourself Mm -hmm. like i remember i saw this i i don't know what show it's from but it's it was a clip on on youtube 
and someone put it on Instagram, and because if you look on Instagram, for I don't know if it's me, but if you look on TikTok, Instagram, there's a lot of poor, broken-hearted people out there, man. It's like it's like where's all the good men at? Where's all the good women at? It's just like it's kind of sad, but like um, I saw this, uh, I saw this one thing, and it's a clip from a show, and it's the dude who played Shaggy in the live-action Scooby-Doo movies. Oh, yeah, 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 I know. And he's talking about how there's players, right? Like, guys who break hearts on a daily basis. And he's saying that each one of those guys, they didn't used to like all the girls. They liked one girl, and they opened up to her, and that one girl destroyed them. And that's that's kind of like, it, there's a beauty to it. Like, there's a reason. Like also, honestly, like, maybe they opened up to their parents. And their parents didn't give them what they need. Oh yeah, it doesn't have to be romantic. That's the thing too. We often forget that it does. Heartbreak does not only come in like romantic relationships, but friendships as well. Like you, know, you have a, you lose a friend. You know, they end up dying, or you have a falling out, and mm -hmm. you know it's like. But you have to, you know, you kind of have to remember as well, guys. You know, you know, don't, don't let that one sucky moment like a breakup ruin what you had like remember you know i mean like unless it's a bad relationship with a person which is an awful human being hey if they left you they did you a favor dude they did you a favor that person was an awful human being they did you a favor but like let's say it just did not work out right she's just like i i have to go or you know i have to go somewhere else you know i have to go with someone else or something it's like i can't do this anymore or he or she right it's like don't let that one little like yeah it ended but the look at the context of the the content the story that you guys made think on the good times it was like it's like you you got value out of it either way and like if you know if you're an artist I would use that and and go forth and and do good things with it create something beautiful with it if you're not an artist and you're not an artsy person then you're more of like maybe a logical person or you know, like, you are, I don't know, I don't know what, what you would call it, but, like, let's say you're not an artist, but you have that heartbreak experience, you have life experience that you could help somebody down the line, right? Mm -hmm. Because the only people who understand exactly are the people who went through something. It's like, you know, it's, it's like when, you know, like, let's say you lost a, a parent. Only the person who's lost a parent could understand that feeling, so it's like, or vice versa, you lost a child. God forbid that happened and you lose a child. The only person who really understands is another person who lost their child. So it's like, you have this experience. You can actually go and legit help another person that, that because yeah, when you get your heart broken and, I, and I'm often referring to the romantic sense when I say it, you feel lost. And honestly, another reason why I chose vampires is because it's like it's like what I imagine feeling undead would feel like. You're not alive, but you're not dead. You're like lost in this limbo, and yeah, it's so yeah. It's but like guys, it's at the same time. It's like it's not the end of the road. It's it's the start of something new, right? And um, yeah, yeah. You can use it. You can make use it and make something beautiful, or you can help other people. Oh yeah. And I hope I did both. I hope I hope yeah. someone got something out of it. If you're reading it. Check For, out his book on Amazon, yeah. man. Like, I, I need to read it. But from what he's saying, it's it sounds really good, and I think it, it would be a good read for you guys. Yeah, like I said, I, I like, like I said, big nerd. So like, it's it's written for vampire nerds by a vampire nerd. <laughs> it's almost comic book like. Uh, if you guys are into detective stories, then this is yeah. exactly what you are looking for. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, like. And honestly, God bless Bram Stoker. God bless that man because he, uh, without Dracula, the original Dracula, obviously there would not be a lamplight. There would not be that inspiration there. Um, and you know, you stand on the shoulders of giants, right? And mm -hmm. I love Bram Stoker, man. I love, I love what what he did. I love, I love, you know that. I love Dracula inside and out. Um, I want to be, I want, if I was an actor, that's one role I would, I would want. I would want Dracula. Dracula, Dracula would be fun. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, but I think, yeah, we've, we've discussed all that we can discuss about Dracula, Vladimir and Taylor. If you guys have something you guys want us to talk about, um, I'm sure we'll do this again. Um, what do you think? 
Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Thanks for having me on. It's been, it's a fun time. You know, like I, yeah, he knows me. He's known me for a long time. I can talk and talk and talk. Yeah. And talk. This guy, yeah, he's, <laughs> I brought him here because you know, like I, I'll have lulls in conversations, but if I have someone who I can talk to, you know, like it's mm-hmm. easy when you're not. It's easy to conversate when you have someone else that conversates back. Yeah. And maybe we'll get other guests. Maybe we can get your friend, the artist. Yeah, yeah, because, yeah, she yeah she she did a really good job, and she did the kindness of her heart. She did, uh, you know. She can promote her work also. Yeah, I, 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 yeah, I asked her, I go, I go, how much do I owe you? And she goes, oh, no, it's, you know, it's like just, yeah. Like I said, guys, it's like, I hope you get something out of it, too. I really hope, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh... And also, on a side note, if you guys are going through a heartbreak right now, break up. Because there's people in my life right now, they recently got out of long-term relationships. And uh, they're kind of hurting right now. So, you know, on a side note, if you guys just remember, it's a lot like being bitten by a vampire heartbreak. Um, you know, it's good. it's not the end, right? It's a start of something new. And you have a choice. You know, do you make the most out of this new life and you do good for others and you do good for yourself or are you going to become something monstrous which you will only lead to the ruin of others and above all the ruin of yourself definitely all right this is res retro through time i am trent i'm sam and we'll see you in the next video bye